Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. Once upon a time, this was the cutting edge of railway communications. This is, of course, not the railway signaling and communication of today, and therein lies a story. Railways, big and small, need some kind of signaling and communication system. The bigger the railway, the larger and more extensive its system needs to be. Let's look at the Southern Pacific Railroad, a descendant of the Central Pacific. This is a pretty old railway for the United States with a history and legacy dating back to the 1860s and the building of the western leg of the first transcontinental railroad. Like many railways, the right-of-way of the line was the best place to put its signal wires and also those for other communication. Early on, most communications were done by telegraph. Later, signal and telephone lines were added to the railway's right-of-way. In the late 1960s and early 70s, Southern Pacific decided that it needed a major upgrade in its communication system. Someone at SP had a very good idea which was to make the system future-proof. Or maybe they just made a very useful mistake. What do I mean by future-proof? What I think this means is to have a system that can handle both today's needs and hopefully future needs. At this time, copper wire was the way to carry most communications, and like most railways, Southern Pacific had one asset that was a big help. It had its right-of-way. Stringing lines along the railway had been done for many years. SP had at this time a simple thought. As a cost-saving move, they decided to use a then-new technology known as fiber optic cable. It was no trouble to lay fiber optic cable along its main line. They both owned or controlled their own right-of-way as having the right to use it for control and communication lines. Fiber optic was still very new and they found that it could handle far more communication channels than could copper wire. Additionally, it provided better quality sound. So while all of these improvements were great, really the laying of fiber optic lines was done as a cost-saving move. Once the system was in place, they found that the system had a far greater capacity than they could have initially imagined, and much of it was unused. Hmm, certainly something could be done with this spare capacity, they thought. Due to regulatory changes that had been adopted, it was now possible for new companies to get into the long-distance telephone market. So here was Southern Pacific with a brand new communication system and with loads of extra capacity. What could be done with it? Let's be a phone company, they thought. So a new long distance communication provider came into being, but it needed a name. Southern Pacific in the 1970s held a contest to select a new name for this new company. The winning entry was Sprint, an acronym for Southern Pacific Railroad Internal Networking and Telephony. This led to many other companies getting into the telecommunications field. Between the 1970s and today, Sprint went through a series of mergers and acquisitions, and the Southern Pacific legacy name disappeared when it merged with the company today known as T-Mobile. This and other early fiber optic systems gave us the core for the backbone of the new telecommunication age. What started as a simple internal upgrade to a railway led to the modern communications infrastructure of today, including the internet. There is more to railroading than just riding the trains, although that is my favorite part. And as always, we'll see you on the train.